especially in the Bay. Yeah, I've been to LA. I was what one that was like exclusively that, which was cool because it was just oh, yeah. nice. Hello, everybody. It's Friday, March third. It's already March. Yep. They already let it be March. Uh, it's March 3rd. It's Friday. We're new weird things here in just a few minutes. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Uh, we're waiting on one Brian Brushwood, uh, who should be here shortly. Okay. We'll wait on two Brian Brushwoods if there's such a thing. <laughs> uh, how's, yeah. your, how's your Friday going, everybody? Uh, any 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 cool things happening on a Friday? Um, I uh, yeah, I, I did uh, went to. San Francisco did an interview for an upcoming PX3 episode, so I can feel like uh, this is a, a, a very, very uh, a fun but but productive trip so far, which is makes me feel good because after this, uh, I ain't doing nothing productive. Mm. I am just gonna sink into. I, I'm, I'm gonna go uh, a goblin mode, Bryce, but I will not be in in, in my nest. I, I will just be prowling the streets of Oakland. <laughs> That might be a different thing. Uh, Going goblin mode out in public. IRL goblin mode might be... IRL goblin mode, <laughs> yeah. No, I... Uh, uh, the thing that really got me into long walks was walking up to Piedmont, which is uh, north of Oakland, and then walking all the way down to Jack London Square. And it's about a five-mile walk, but I've not done it in the two years since I've moved. Mm. And I have, I have long thought about how, how much I enjoy that walk. And so I am... Oh, champing at the bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be, I'm so pumped. I'm going to go. There's a cigar shop that I used to buy my cigars from that I buy them for the weekend. Uh -huh. And I checked it. They're still open. It's, it's a husband and wife, but the wife pretty much runs it. And so she was very sad when I, when I moved away, she does not know that I am, that I'm coming back. I'm going to be very excited. It's going to be like a homecoming. Yeah. I'm going to play the fast and the furious song uh, <laughs> as I walk in from the mist to, yeah. to buy my cigars and then walk my happy ass all the way down to Jack London Square. Enjoy a lovely day in the Bay, a crisp March mm -hmm. day in the Bay Area, and then uh, and then go to Hood Slam tonight. It's going to be uh, uh, just an absolute thrill. And then I get to see Andrew and, and, and Roshni and hopefully go out to their place tomorrow. It is, it is just, it's all coming up Millhouse. Oh, Andrew, I think you're... Uh, uh thing might have disconnected. Muted? Is oh. that what you're going to say? You're saying I was muted? Is oh. we going to say that I was muted? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, right, yeah, you up. weren't... Uh, I, think, I know, Bryce. You, <laughs> you, Bryce, <laughs> Bryce gets yelled at for doing his job all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, too bad you're doing Hood Slam because I could have brought you into the office today because it was an open house. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, they have an open right. house tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, to be totally honest, um, it will just be a excuse for me to make another specific trip out here um, when I don't have live shows or birthday stuff. But uh, it, you know, I was talking with Darren yesterday. I had I had a very Oakland moment yesterday as I went downtown to get uh, some lunch at the Tribune building, and uh, I see as if it were three years ago Darren's gigantic, uh, you know, uh, hotel on wheels van. <laughs> just rumble down uh, uh rumble down the street and park because he was picking up food at another restaurant right across the street so i texted him he sat down and i'm like yeah you want to know what the best thing about this is is like i can come here as much as i want and i'll always just do my favorite things and yeah. and none like I, it'll just always be the best time and i'm and i'm i'm thrilled so i'm Only already good planning stuff. another reason to come back up here yeah 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 i mean i guess that's I, that's kind of a homecoming, you know, you're a, another home. Of sorts. Of sorts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, this is, this is what happens. You move around a bunch and then, uh, you know, you have, you have all these little roots in, in various different places. And then you turn 40, you start visiting them and uh, slowly your life decays and you die. <laughs> we're, get, we're entering a very dark period of the podcasts now. Everybody... No, but it'll be good. It's a, it's a fun <laughs> time. You know, like everybody says. The, the fun Caleb's descent people. into darkness. Uh, look. <laughs> uh, uh no, I'm 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 thrilled. I'm I'm very, very excited. Yeah. Um Boodly Doo. 
I think we get started. Yeah, I guess we just get started. Yeah, let's without just roll. Him. Let's just roll. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll 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 bomb in. He knows how to he knows how to pick it up. That's true. Uh, okay, give me one second to set up a shot for just the three of us to start with. Um, boodly do. Uh, of course, if you Enough want to support this, excuses, price. Of course, if you want to support this, you can go over to Patreon, patreoncom slash things. Uh, throw us a buck an episode and keep this show moving even when we are without a brushwood. Uh, okay, you guys want to do some weird things? Let's yeah. do it. All right, I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Just us. It's always been Brian's here, but he's going on a silent strike. You know, he just refuses to talk. Yeah, he's, so he's doing a bit. Microphone. He's yeah for for uh, uh, only audio listeners. Brian is here. He's mm. uh, sitting. He's doing a bit where at a certain point, uh, when he can't take anymore, he'll just start acting like he walked into the studio right. uh, uh, last minute. So that's yeah. the bit that he's doing. And so don't think anything is weird when he pretends despite the fact that he's been here the entire time mm -hmm. he pretends that he just uh ran into the studio and is setting things up yeah. yeah so let's start with some science news uh i'd say probably one of the biggest things news stories this week uh would be the department of energy coming out with their report on the origins of covid and we don't actually know what was in the report we don't know really what was said the people with inside information said that DOE thinks that it is likely that COVID origined from a lab in Wuhan, or was a lab leak. Um, when asked how confident they, the, the, the report was given low confidence, which um, is one of these things where people will interpret, you'll see, you'll know where somebody falls on the debate by how they interpret what the low confidence means when they when yeah. you hear that said. What does it mean? Uh, it varies report to report. Low confidence means we don't have enough information to be sure about this, but when they say, yeah, we think it was likely leaked from a lab, that's kind of the lead right there, that that what was considered a, and by the way, the FBI had already issued a report where they said with moderate confidence, they think that a lab leak is likely. What does this mean? Does it mean it's a lab leak? Not necessarily. It could still be animal origin. That's still on the table. But the lab leak hypothesis, remember, had been shut aside and was said, that's ridiculous, that's conspiracy theory. You would be shut down on social media for saying, I've had people get angry with me for bringing up lab leak and suggestions. I've lost Twitter followers because I said, we should investigate it. And I will categorically say, I do not know. I do not know where this came from. But to not investigate a lab leak, to not treat this with seriousness, considering all the lab leaks we've had historically between our labs, everything else mm -hmm. is irresponsible. Well, but the people on your on your Twitter are not the decision makers for what does and doesn't get investigated. The people, well, well I don't know. I take a look at my Twitter, but mm -hmm. people, I have people in the scientific community, and mm -hmm. when people are shouting down at other people for saying, "Let's look at this," that's not healthy. When people are sure. saying, "No, you're, you know, getting," and what I got a small fraction. I have friends who are investigators, people who have looked into this. Mm -hmm. And the vitriol they were treated by people within the scientific community mm -hmm. is going to be embarrassing, I think, in the long run, because it doesn't it. The problem was it wasn't that you had to say, oh, I think it's either or you had to be intellectually honest with it. And when people were trying to shut down that discussion to begin with, mm -hmm. like, oh, it's racist. OK, it, how yeah. is how is a lab leak more racist than saying that it leaked from a Chinese fish, you know, wildlife market like that does that's. That's a distraction. It's not a valid argument because you're still in, in the lab leak mm -hmm. hypothesis. There's more blame to be put on us, too. I mean, I uh, at least from my understanding, I'm the least educated person here on, on this topic. <laughs> uh, but I, I, it seems like a chicken and egg sort of problem, right? Like uh, you say you know, before evidence comes out, you say it's a lab leak theory and then suddenly you're you're taking a side before there's evidence out. And now there's no, evidence. No, 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 no. Let me clarify, Bryce. I'm not saying it's lab leak. I'm saying we needed to investigate and push for an investigation to lab leak. And it seems like that's what we're going. It seems like that's the trajectory we're on now. So three well, years later, three years here's, later. Here's, here's, I mean, I can turn back. Here's, I can use my time machine, but I can only use it a couple times. Right? But, but no, my, guys, my, guys, address, guys, Bryce, my point uh -huh. was 
the attitude that people shut it down is say, yeah, we find, but the thing is with people were pushing for this three years ago to say, let's look at this. And that mm -hmm. was being shut down by media. You got blocked on social media for saying, here's some evidence for a lab leak. That was wrong. That was unethical in my opinion. And we need to think about mm -hmm. what did we do wrong? Not just, it's not that we get it wrong. How did we treat the process wrong? Uh, I think 100% what is very frustrating, and I think thankfully we are now coming to the other side of on some level is the polarization politically, because this broke fairly cleanly on political lines, very unfortunately, like a lot of other issues throughout this uh, uh, lockdown and pandemic. The fact that it happened during an election year certainly does not help. But what we're coming to the other side of is there should be an investigation. And that is something that's a lot more complicated than you might mention, because there is an 8,000 pound dragon in the room that nobody really wants to talk about. And that is the fact that if this is a lab leak, then there is material evidence that there was some level of a cover up from the Chinese Communist Party. They are the number one frenemy of the United States. They obviously hold the keys to our supply chain, like we have all experienced globally over the last two years. And yet, if this leaked and they knew about it, and there's really very little chance that they did not, uh, and they have directed this World Health Organization investigation that happened that was very clearly kind of staged and managed, there is signs that there could be some level of cover up, then there are a lot further questions that do need to be asked. The fact that the United States intelligence community is, is right now, uh, uh, at least beginning, the FBI has come out and said it, the Department of Energy has said that this is where they believe things are. There are other intelligence agencies that believed that there's more of a zoonotic situation. Uh, uh, the fact that we we do need to look at this, and and this is something that I think the United States has to lead on because the the, the question of where this came from is incredibly materially important. And the I, fact and that I we wanna, don't there know. Are there are U.S. government agencies that have been involved that have information not disclosed, and there are organizations we've funded, like EcoHealth Alliance, which have not divulged research and things that people have been asking for to have. That's part like CCP, China, one thing, our own house is not in order. Our own yeah. people are not cooperative with this. There are emails now that we've seen where people go from, hey, we're suspicious, and then a day later they say, okay, we're not going to say, we're not going to give credence to the lab leak, and it's extremely suspicious. And part of the people, we had people like, it was the Lancet, you know, had this whole, hey, this is why this is a dumb theory, why, why we know it's zoonotic. They didn't disclose that people were getting, some of the people involved were getting $25 million worth of funding to research this topic, that they were actually involved with the labs. There were so many conflicts of interest that weren't disclosed that it looks a lot like there were people who realized, oh, shoot, there is stuff that goes back to us saying, should we keep funding the lab? Because we provided funding to the lab, the WIV. There's stuff that goes back to us showing Back in 2017, hey, we're not sure about how they're handling, you know, SARS-like viruses and stuff. We're not sure about their standards. And then it looks like there's a lot of our hands maybe dirty on this, that that was part of the cover-up. One thing to say, hey, the Chinese do the Chinese did, but we did our own. And now we continue to throw money. My fear is we continue to throw money at this kind of research where if this, and that's the scary thing, if this was a lab leak, it means... What was the biggest? The, what was the biggest killer of humanity? You know, new new killer of humanity outside of like cancer, or obesity was something we unleashed, and we still haven't done anything to make sure that we're taking the right safeguards. I'm I think it comes research. down yeah, to for personal this. responsibility. If you say you're gonna be somewhere on a show for an appointment, you be there. You don't forget mm -hmm. to put it on your calendar, and that's why I've been here the whole time. Just like we yeah. set up. Just like we said. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, uh, yep. okay. So, yes. All right. There were mistakes. People did bad things. There's probably a cover up <laughs> within the pandemic. What do we go? Where do we go from here? We've pointed all of our fingers. Everyone made mistakes. What do we do now? Do we? I mean, it well, sounds like there's going to be. I don't think everybody made the same. I, I don't think everybody made the same. I, I, I want to move forward, though. I am, I, okay. okay. I know. I want to move forward. We have to get rid of this idea that we have to shut down ideas that we find unpopular. That was problem number one. You got blocked on social media. You got blocked on Twitter and Facebook if you're spreading articles that said, hey, here's the thing about lab leak. That literally is the thing happened, and now it appears that they may have been advised by the government to do that. We need to stand up and say, no, we got to have free speech, and we got to be able to let things go. We can't use, well, this could be dangerous. We can't, you know, we have to be very wary of using the excuse of public harm. Well, uh, uh, That's number one. So, so, so starting on number one, 
uh, everybody here, I think, has an appetite for, or at least a strong tolerance for hearing ideas that they don't necessarily agree with and having discourse to uncover, you know, what, what, uh, what the deeper truth is or something to take away. Um, uh, the, the, the younger generation uh, has been brought up uh, with less of an appetite for that. Like, I mean, we used, to, we, used to, we used to settle stuff with fists on the, the playground uh, when, when yeah, I was younger. That's right, we need more war. No, 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 no. Uh, but what we do need is we need to uh, have- Strongest wins. We, we need, uh, I, here's my question. Um, my suspicion is that uh, those who have been raised in a post-internet era have let have always had the option to n not have to encounter ideas that they don't like. They they've always had the option to uh, to find a safe place. And I how to do find we, a safe place do, from how ideas. Do we even insist on taking your yes. vegetables. Like 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 we've watched uh, news outlets switch from you know giving news having vegetables as part of every newscast you know here are the facts and so on and then somebody at some point people are like why are we even having vegetables let's just have it all be the good stuff like i i agree that there should be lots of discourse and lots of face to face with nasty ideas that you don't agree with but i don't know how to make anybody 20 years younger than me be want to do that well i i would say if if this is the same conversation where where we're saying like hey everyone needs to let ideas exist more then i don't think we can blame p younger people for the world that they have been entered into i i agree so the question is is um how do you how do we sell this <laughs> How do we sell the idea? How do we, how do we reach we, these kids? How do we change all of the uh, behavior of humans around the world? Not a conspiracy no, either. No, no, I, no. I mean, I, 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 there's, I don't, that's an argument. I think there's a point. I would say my frustration is people in power using the apparatus they have of influence social media and the fear mongering to get them to shut things down is what scares me. Is that any idea that we don't like, we quickly say, how can we say that this is going to lead to violence or hate or bigotry and whatever and shut this down? So how do we That's change my that? Fear, is but how do we change this? I mean, do we what, what do we do to make people change like this? I mean, it, <laughs> do we make rules? It doesn't sound like we want rules about this stuff. We are we are in I, a particularly politically divided time. I do think that, again, you can't argue with the fact that these broke fairly cleanly on political lines and. Uh, we could use a little dose of, uh, of if not anarchism, then a, a distrust of authority. And, and the idea that like people plug themselves into a right versus left uh, paradigm and then are dutifully, dutifully like uh, marching into the breach so they can fight each other is something that I think, you know, every once in a while you should look back and say, is, is the, the marching orders that I got uh, appropriate? And, or, or you know, is there a question that does need to be asked. And I think that that is something that we are coming to now because I don't think that the world that we have, that the, the discourse that we have had over the past five years, I mean, really since, you know, uh, 2016 and 2015, like has served us well. I don't think that we have, uh, uh, that we have, have moved particularly forward in terms of uh, our, our, our issues. And this is one of them, you know, the, the, the fact that we went through a public health emergency and we're not, we're shutting down dialogue uh, about, hey, is there a chance that we could sync with the sequence this virus that we would know exactly? Because if it came from a lab, I mean, somebody knows exactly what it is. Somebody knows, I mean, a, a thing that, that could help us continue to to mitigate it what, is just sitting in a file cabinet somewhere. And and that's that's a very, very, very frustrating thought when we have when we went through the, the, the few years that, that, that we did. And look, I'm back in the city that I was in when everything locked down. And I remember the Diamond Princess pulling into the Oakland Harbor and everybody saying that this thing lived on surfaces for 10 days and, and that, that this was an instant killer. And we if, if it were treated as a lab leak when it happened, before we even get into who's to blame, let's just understand what the solutions could have been if we would have pushed forward. Now, at, at that point, I think, Bryce, when you're looking for, for steps to go forward, yeah. truth, that's, that's what we want. We want, and we want the organs for which normally our society uh, uh, pushes for truth. And I'll put, you know, uh, uh, journalism is certainly 
one of them. We we have a fractured media market right now, but the idea that that we are not or that that we want to move forward, let's let's be open and honest about what these situations are. And uh, uh, I, I don't think that that is in terms of everybody has a responsibility for it. There's always going to be people yelling at each other on the internet. It's why the internet was invented. But uh, I'm glad to see a little bit more of a consensus. Derek Thompson, who's a writer for The Atlantic, and largely talks to people that have been, you know, pro-zoonotic and pro-mask, uh, even to the point of mandates. He has an article out today talking about, hey, we, we need to take a step back in terms of how we talk about this stuff. And then it's got to be a little bit more, little less science and little less big S science. Like, like there are no permanent solutions to a lot of these things. We should constantly be looking at evidence. We should constantly be reassessing where we are. And it feels like I'm optimistic. It feels like we are moving at least closer to that. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we are we are, are, are having, I think, adult conversations and not throwing bumper stickers at each other. My, my concern is that, if it, again, I want to for sure, I do not know where it came. I, I, my frustration came from the way which the media and government and whatnot decided not to follow leads because it looks like it would have been, they were listening to people who had conflicts of interest that weren't expressed. And the problem we deal with now is, Almost 7 million people died because of COVID worldwide. You're, you're at Holocaust level numbers now. The interests of people who may have done bad decisions, what up, who are covering things up from the start to cover their asses and to get everybody else to help cover for them. And it, it's, I'm not talking like a conspiracy sort of thing, but just sort of to misdirect and tell people this is bullshit and to support this because your friend said it is high, you know, because it is. It is a, it'd be a, t if I was a researcher, if I was somebody involved in saying, yeah, I, I, I think that their standard, like people are like, you know, their standards are good, but they're getting better. Would you grant them funding? I could see a regular person saying, yes, let's do this. And then all of a sudden this thing happens. It's like, oh my God, did I help kill 7 million people because I passed off on this? It, it's a terrifying sort of situation to see that I think there is a possibility that people are in where they realize that they made some decisions that were very bad and they were lucky. Because early on, they were the same experts people turned to to say, hey, what do you think's going on? What's going on? What's happening? Because there was that little narrative shift from, yeah, Lably could happen to, no, Lably, not at all. And it's like, what? did we find uh, an so it, 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 if, if, if I may, it, it sounds like what Bryce is hungry for is what? future tense verbs and not past tense verbs. And so far- Yeah, future tense verbs. We need full and guest investigation. We need to go after the different groups, government agencies for in the US that, that, that had information that are withholding this information. We need to get testimony from people. We need a full ass investigation of everybody that was involved from this level to sort of get testimony to understand it. That is step number one to know what this is. Disclosure document. We need pressure. China has databases, viral databases, things like this. They pulled offline right when this thing started to break out. They took this database, made this data unavailable, still has it. Economic pressure. Say, hey, listen, we want this data. You're not a good faith actor. And, and, and why is this? It's so it doesn't happen again. If this, if it was an animal and then it's like, eh, it, we don't really, it's hard to control. If it was a lab leak, it means the people trying to prevent this from happening caused it to happen and throwing more money at it without investigating why means it could happen again. So to avoid happening it again, future tense, understand exactly why this happened, examine what happened and go, are we, are, are we throwing more money at a bad system that may make us more vulnerable? Well, and, and, and to, to add on to that, the reason why you theoretically have these programs is so if a thing like this happened, you could deploy mitigation factors faster than you would otherwise, because you understand higher, more weaponized levels of these viruses. If we don't, if this is what many think, and I'll come out and say, I think right now, being a barking dog on the internet, I think it's a lab leak. So take that, that uh, a bark for whatever you want. But uh, if it is that, that means that we are incentivizing if it happens again for it to be covered up again, because we've already shown that it's possible. And that's the one thing that can't happen. If, if it, you know, no matter what you think about gain of function research or trying to uh, uh, make viruses more dangerous so we can understand it. The one reason why we do it is so we can fix it faster. We can, we can make this better if it gets out. And so if you've let it out and we didn't do that, that's, I mean, that's 
That's bad. That's ugly. That's the, that's the, the this is the one thing that couldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, uh and, and Geozag in the chat says it's going to happen again. Sh- sure. I mean, like, like lab leaks happen all the time. That's the other thing that's that's crazy about this story is that it, it's obscured the fact that, like, SARS got out. You know, like, there's 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 been – lab leaks are a thing that happened. Now, should that factor into us funding or endorsing gain-of-function research? I think but scientists say maybe. Let's talk about it. Containment let's, should let's be on the table in. for sure. The- yeah, there's a there's a world where it is less likely to happen. And, and the thing that ter- and, I, and I get I get a lot of people like, what difference does it make? I'm like, that's like saying your nuclear react. There's a all of a sudden everybody's dying of radiation. There's a nuclear reactor next to you. And you're like, hey, we're already sick. What difference does it make? It's like kind of need to know. And that yeah. that is my fear that I feel like there's not enough anxiety about right now. Is that seven million dead, seven million dead. And and the discussion of the origins or the cause of this was still a hot topic issue. And that is like that it is. And now there are more labs, more places, reaches more funding going into this. We may have increased. We may have increased exponentially our likelihood of something just as bad or worse happening again because we didn't. I mean, I think the important takeaway is better late than never. If you show up like a third late, at least you showed up. And if you want us to keep on showing up, head on over to patreon.com slash weird things where you can keep this program showing up every single Friday. He's heralding. He's reminding us. We're we're jumping back to the game every every so often. That's right. Patreon.com. Brian, you did... You did such a good job at the beginning where we said you were gonna you're here all along and you were gonna pretend to jump in in the middle of it and yeah. your commitment to the bit is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I do know that, that if people perfect. go to patreoncom slash weird things, <laughs> they can support this very show. Oh my gosh, he's a professional. It's like he's been doing this character yeah. all his life. It's amazing. just an honor. It's an honor watching him work. <laughs> to be, to be totally yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Crew Dragon, uh, the latest mission to bring NASA and a Cosmot crew and, uh, I think the UAE astronaut, I believe, to the International Space Station. They successfully docked. They're aboard. This took off from Cape Canaveral yesterday. They had a minor little problem when they went to go dock. One of the little docking locks said, I'm not locked. Like, no, we're pretty sure you're locked. I'm not locked. And they checked. It was locked. So, and this, of course, is nice given... You know, the, the Russians have had to replace uh, uh, a new module because one of their, their leaky spacecrafts keep leaking and causing havoc. It's kind of mm. like they're stretched really thin and can't keep things together. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Out of context for them. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, um... Is it, do you think, do you remember when they said the ISS was spinning? Remember when the ISS yeah. spun last year? Yeah. Was that a? Do you think that not to keep it on a leak thing? I was but about to say. Do, yeah, do you I think feel that like was, we're zeroing in on a theme? Because <laughs> I know at the time we were like, oh, they they hit the throttle accidentally and then it spun and all. But could it have been a a, a a you know a mechanical failure like this? One of these leaks? Yeah, it wasn't. No, they believe it was a mechanical error. They couldn't fix it because oh. it was like a. They've they're they're underfunded and it's getting worse and they're dire straits and it's kind of terrifying. Wow. Well, uh, at least they're nowhere really dangerous. Just yeah. a valley of no. death, the no. void of space. That's the universe yeah. is no man's yeah. land. Yeah. yeah. So, but congrats on the militia yeah. hey, getting uh, that up there and everything. I have a question. Uh, first of all, yeah. number one, apropos of nothing, I want to remind everyone that Andrew and I placed a $500 bet that by the end of last year. <laughs> 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 you placed it bet that what? <laughs> that that uh, I took the side that I didn't think Elon Musk, notorious deadline ignorer, would be able to go to space twice in Starship. <laughs> and, and Andrew was very positive that he would, so he placed a $500. No, I didn't think they were going to do it. Let me be clear. I didn't think they were going to do it, but I had to take uh, that off position uh, to support uh, it. Well, you have, you uh, have you'll, 500 you'll, reasons to argue the otherwise. You'll also I be know. taking a pie in the face either way. Oh, I got the pie! <laughs> I got the pie. How did we not do this this weekend? Like, we were literally all in the same place. It would have hit Andrew with I, a pie. I, it can't be I'm my fault because it was I've a surprise party for me, so I couldn't have known it. 
I'm not saying I've avoided SpaceX stories because of this, <laughs> but I have been going, well, I made it to March. <laughs> yeah. Zobi forgot. Yeah. yeah, that's actually a very, very tactical play, but it didn't work out for yeah. you this time. So, I, so how, I, how, I how, are we, how are we paying this off? How are we settling this? Uh, I don't know. I, I uh, told Andrew recently that I would like to just come out and hang out at his his new digs for a little bit. Uh, so maybe maybe when I'm physically there in the spot, we we could figure something out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Name the charity you wanted to go to, though. We will we'll we'll keep that part up. Oh, oh you um, know what? Let me hold that back. Let me let me think a little the bit. The space orphans. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to explain. I think oh, my def my default charity is World Builders. Um, but uh, let me let me let me think more on that. We need a, we need another like, we need other think of World really Builders. Really embarrassing for you, Andrew. No, 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 no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't play that game. There was there was a period of of uh, uh, it was pre Great Night, so it was Night Attack, where uh, we would play games and we went through a phase where we were just making each other bet things, but we wound up making each other making the loser of our dumb Tuesday games uh, make political donations to uh, various candidates. But I think our inboxes are still suffering. Yes. From uh, uh, the the uh, uh, donating of random ten and fifteen dollars to various different. It turns out campaigns that have since shared our, our data a billion times. It turns out that there's one thing that both Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump absolutely agree on, and that's that they would like Brian Brushwood's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's bringing us together. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but but, uh, yeah. but I, it, 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 the reason I thought of that is because it might be a fun game. Does anybody have a guess as to how many... SpaceX launches have happened in the last 365 days. In the last calendar year, with that, without peaking, I suspect Andrew will be best at this game. Mm. Uh, so, so we'll save him for last. Uh, who, who, who wants to go first? Ooh, I'll say 25. I'll say, I'll say nine, uh, 103. Ooh, 103. Okay, yeah. wow. Justin? Um, uh, 104. Ugh, taking the over. Smart. Yep. Andrew? 102 would be the best Something tactical like play. <laughs> I think it's like 50. Okay. I think it's like 50. All right. I'm going to say SpaceX launches, a uh, number of SpaceX launches in 2022. So that'd be last, last year, calendar year. Yeah. Uh, 180 rockets lifted off successfully. Justin! Wait, 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 wait. That's per that was, Nature mm, Journal. Mm, mm, mm. So that was, was that last total? Because I know they've had... Uh, oh. Oh, you know what? They probably... Are, are they counting like uh, when they use three All rockets at once or... Oh, no, counts. they're counting... They're count, I think that's lifetime count. Uh, oh. oh, okay. Uh, then I think it might be 61. Uh, one launch every six days yeah. last year. Yes, that, that's the stat I knew they were doing. I knew they were doing either one a week or one every six days. So wow, that's uh, and that I, cadence is. In, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it this over this weekend. I was like, I should unsubscribe to SpaceX on YouTube because there's always a live stream of their of their <laughs> rocket Let launch. Me guess. Oh, the miracle is, of is, space! Is it going up? <laughs> Boring. <laughs> it's it's like subscribing to uh, Boeing's channel. Like a yeah. plane took off. Yeah, the, <laughs> the stat I knew was last week they hit a hundred landings. So I knew that it had to be the the launch. I knew oh, the launch wow. cadence was going one per week, one per week, and they increased it to one every six days. So wow, man, that's... and they've done back to back launches in like the same day too. That's amazing. Wow. Damn, uh, space getting crowded. Also, so, uh, but but also there's say... a lot of it, and there is a lot of it. I want to I want to turn our attention to the terrestrial to the ground. Uh, you all been following the death train in Florida? Uh, you know what? No. I failed to hop aboard that particular train. I would love to hear about so, it. So, Florida has worked on its really fast rail called Brightline. Go type in like Brightline into Google News, like Florida and Brightline, just just to see what comes. B R I G H T. See what, see what pops. Yeah. Uh, here's a uh, Google news for Brightline Brightline to offer high speed rail between Orlando and South Florida Brightline train to hit 125 miles per hour in new tests, uh, uh passenger service to begin soon Two killed when Brightline commuter train hits SUV. You can't do that. <laughs> uh, now type in Brightline and then, uh, Florida Brightline and accident. 
Oh no! Oh, All right, dear. from Google News: Couple killed, two dead, two killed, two killed. Driver hurt. Uh, congressman calls for pause to expansion after deadly crash. Safety concerns. Oh my goodness! What so, is happening? Is 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 this a case, what? Andrew? Of of humans are reacquainting themselves with just how powerful and deadly railroad cross crossings are. So the, the challenge is that in other parts of the world, as has been explained to me, other parts of the world where they have high-speed trains, they're elevated. In Florida, Florida's flat. They're not elevated. And so when you hear the little railroad thing go down, dang, 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 you think it's like a 35-mile-an-hour train coming through. Oh. You don't think it's an 80-mile-an-hour train coming through. Oh. So the deaths per mile for this thing, as I've seen it, are like humongous. Something like 88 people killed so far. In the last since this they've been testing this bright line train. That's more than died of shark attacks. It is it is it yeah. is crazy that they went with the name Brightline and not coming to Netflix in a limited series. <laughs> because Yeah. Jeez, this uh, is and, this is so I mean, you already have train projects are already really difficult to get done. If you're trying to do a light rail or a, a high speed rail, it's already difficult to just do it, to execute on it. And then the fact of you're killing people. All right. Hold on, hear me out. Well, oh. people, well, people are dying because they are crossing. So my, my, I, I have not seen any of this, but based on the the uh, reporting on it, it sounds like people are doing an illegal thing and trying to cross tracks when they should not. The problem is, is that they think, oh, well, this should be easy because it normally I'm able to do this with a slower train. Guess what? When you double the speed, you double the the, the danger. Okay, uh -huh. which one is more deadly, this train or the Golden Gate Bridge? This oh. train, yeah, I, I I think only barely. Well, I think only slightly. So wait, we're talking about deaths the, the per year, suicides from the Golden Gate Bridge. People like, like if if we're gonna personify architecture <laughs> and yeah. attribute all deaths to architecture, who's more to deadly, this train yeah. or the Golden so Gate people, Bridge? People trying to run, trying to run the tracks. Oh my God. Uh, versus people who have decided to try to leap off the Golden Gate Bridge oh in a dramatic final. Uh, yes, Bryce. And, so Andrew sent along this link here from Miami New Times uh, a timeline of bright line fatalities in South Florida. And this is a long article. This is a really long article starting from January 2023. And it keeps going to 2022. Sorry. And a 2021, and a 2020, and it's a like, 2019, and a 2018. So, like, 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 if if you had it in your subscription feed on Twitter, you would unfollow because it would be blowing up your phone too much. <laughs> it would be everywhere. This, uh, this is uh, uh, whether or not people are doing something, you know, doing b b b the wrong behavior whether around or not trains. It's their fault or not. Yeah. This is a lot. This and, is a big scoreboard. And remember. If somebody's driving a car with three other people in it and that person made the mistake, right. those other people did it. Right. And, yeah. and, and that's the, the, uh, and, and, but if there's so, it's one of the things like there's so much inertia behind this project, there's so much push for this and Hey, it's, you know, mass transit. Florida, Florida has wrong? wanted a high speed rail forever. Uh, you know, since I can remember as a child, they, they would pass uh, uh, funding for it. Uh, it, it, it has been a, a constant, persistent thing on the ballot. The, the impossible dream being that you could have a rail line, a high-speed rail line that could connect uh, north to south uh, from possibly even Tallahassee or Gainesville through Orlando into South Florida. And you'd be able to unite the major population hubs and, and – uh, make it easier for people to get back and forth between two different and separated by about three and a half uh, hours of driving time, uh, the the touristy areas of Florida. It has never happened because selling the land and developing the land for a new rail line has proven to be extraordinarily expensive, if not impossible. But the idea of wanting to do this has certainly been there uh, the question is at what cost if people keep dying because they're 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 trying to run uh uh, uh run 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 the crossing uh, and or if we're going to take this from an extraordinarily grim societal training perspective is there a point in which people just know absolutely not do not try to cross this uh uh cross this thing because it, it's become reputational 
that you would die because of the bright light. That That's one of those things that when the idea is sold, you could probably crunch the numbers in such a way where you factor in engineering difficulties, eminent domain difficulties, uh, construction difficulties, supply chain difficulties. But I'm going to bet that an easy thing to miss would be PSA difficulties, like, like public messaging, spending millions of dollars to get the word out that, hey, there's now a bullet flying at all times on, on this track. Please don't cross it. Uh, to in, um, I, I'd be doubly curious to know, and I mean, this is not something I'll put on you, Bryce, in, un, under this moment, but, mm. but I, I should look up, like, I wonder if, my guess is when the idea is sold, you give a best case scenario for how fast you can get from point A to point B. But once you factor in, I would imagine once somebody smashes into a family of four, uh, probably slows down that train for quite a while and, re and reduces the overall uh, metrics on how well the train is performing on, on timelines. But if yeah. anybody wants yeah. to challenge me on those, <laughs> I'm ready to debate. I, 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 mean, I, 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 I am hearing this for the first time. Well, that's why I'm yeah, speculating it, wildly. <laughs> it's hard because, like, yeah, like the most of it seems to be people trying to cross the gates because they assume there's more time because they haven't done it. And it's hard because you have a thing like, well, people will learn. Well, that's, you know, more fatalities and more of this. And, well, and, 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 and at a crude economic standpoint i mean actuarially speaking uh, let's say you we can have a thumbnail for what what the economic loss of a human life is it, it makes this even more expensive than i assume it already was yeah yeah nobody would agree to this if they knew what the fatality rate was that would never have been never would have sold and, and it doesn't seem like there's a really clear response like ah well we need money to improve some gates like you're gonna get some lawsuits that are gonna make you think that you know, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't see the train going away. I do think that, yeah, maybe they need to rethink how they work. I'm smarter people than me are thinking about this right now, but you know, it's hard because you have like a Brian talk, the actuary sort of some, somebody can say like, okay, there is a certain amount of, you have to accept a certain amount of risk. I get that. But it seems like you have to have an idea of ah, when it gets above this amount. No, we need to really rethink this. Yeah. Right. And, and of course the horrific part of any kind of big, uh, city work, statewide work, you know, international work is uh, you need data. And the only way you get that data is to let time go by and count the number of deaths and mm -hmm. factor that into your future. I mean, it's, it's, and it's a, I mean, this is a problem, right? I mean, you're talking about how other high speed trains are elevated. That is a fun, that's a foundational decision. We they, literally, <laughs> literally, but it's not like they can just grab all the rails and hoist them up like it's that you that's a that but, to solve that is to go back to square one the the window is closed on that choice yeah um and so what what, what do they do do they put gates do they put fencing do they well and, and do they course, electrify uh, the <laughs> do they as, electrify the track as andrew pointed out it's like the more of those efforts that you make uh, the more you take responsibility for other people's actions, because right. then when somebody dies, it's not because they decided to go across the track. Your plan it, failed. It, it, exactly. Your other plan it's, failed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your efforts to stop people from crossing was not very good. Yeah. So let's shift to a more fun oh. topic here. Taxes. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Death um, and taxes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my solution now is like I just put money into a bank account and pretend I paid the IRS already to get over the stress of that. Oh, really? Um, that's that's after right. things. I, I'm sure that's. I want you all to join my new video game studio. Let's do it. Okay. We're I'm gonna make video games. Let's make a video game. Let's uh, go. That's your job. Uh, last last time we did something like this, the video game was. <laughs> Brushwood Family Murder Simulator 8000. And uh, it turns out I, I didn't like it. Uh, I Game gave it year. only seven out of 10 stars. Oh, um, that's, so, that's so bad. That's such a bad rating. <laughs> that's I've my got, worst rating ever for a video game. I've got, I've got a sector that I think is really, really doesn't get enough attention. Uh, I think it's an audience that we can reach that, that has an extremely accessible audience. And, you know, 
tap it into a billion dollar industry. I want to know who's on board with me. A, a, a one billion dollar industry? Well, billions, not billion. I mean, it, it's just this audience. I think reaching them is going to be great. Okay, I'm I'm back in. I was out for a second, but now I'm back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, but, Justin. Big, bigger or smaller than VR? <laughs> not the promise of VR, but actual VR. <laughs> I, 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 it yeah. might relate. I, I think. Oh. I think. I think it's going to be. You know. I think. I think that there's a sector here that could may really like that a lot. Uh, I'm in 100. percent Lock, stock, and barrel. I got 20 bucks. Cool. Let's do it. All right. All right. Uh, we need to beta test some games here. All right. Okay. Okay. Bryce, I want you to do Follow the Rabbit. Okay. Um, Justin, oh, I'm following that I want you to do, uh, we'll call it Bones. And Brian, I want you to do Butt Sniffer. So all of you get uh-huh. to do the testing right. on these different games. Sure. Let me know how you play. I'm chasing that there rabbit like go. an mf I'm I'm putting on okay. headphones over my headphones right now. I'm ready. Yeah. Yep. Right. Beep, beep. Uh, I'm 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 Okay. I'm yep. chasing yeah. that rabbit. And, and and I'm 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 definitely not gonna forget to do them like Brian and I did this Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's sniffing. What do you sniff? What is what do your dog noses sniff? Butts. Yeah. He's got yeah. the special he's got good, the special good. butt controller. Good. Okay. I've got a new RPG called Squirrel who wants to test this out. Oh my God. Are you saying what I, I I'm locking it in. I think I know exactly what you're <laughs> pitching at me. This is yeah. incredible. Uh, 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 are you guys locked in or should I say go? Uh, I, I think, well, I don't, you go. It's VR for dogs. <laughs> It's video, dog just VR. video games, video, video games, games, video games, video for, games dogs. for dogs. Wow. <laughs> so what? go to Axios has a story, video games for dogs aimed to help aging canine brains. And they show this beautiful husky playing like whack-a-mole. Oh, and he's playing with a snout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, it's wild. Uh, last night we were getting caught up on poker face and both of our dogs sit. And um, you would think if, if dogs couldn't, you know, see or process what was happening visually, they would align themselves in any random direction and chew on something, uh, possibly one would hope, facing their uh, uh, their benefactors. But instead, the dogs naturally align themselves to watch TV with us. Like they're definitely actually watching TV. So this company or these researchers are working on their goal is like, hey, as dogs get older, they need stimulation. You want to keep them basically, you know, mentally healthy, whatever. And so a UK-based startup called Joypaw, J-O-I Paw, P-A-W, is making video games for dogs. They have a whack-a-mole game. The dogs, they if a dog seeds, they get a treat. There's a motion sensor they can put in the dog's collar for additional control of the games. So yeah, that's uh, the uh, wow. Uh, two factors really strike me about this. Number one, um, pet owners will do bonkers things because they love their pets. Number two, uh, when we hired a trainer, he explained uh, dogs in particular, they, they want two things. They want structure and they want a job at all times. And so it's your job as somebody raising a dog to make sure that the dog always has structure and always has a job that they know what to do. Even when it comes to feeding time or whatever, just a few seconds of making them play the game, take it, uh, leave it, leave it, leave it, take it, is 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 healthy for them and causes them to do well. This is part of the reason that, you know, uh, German shepherds are essentially bioweapons when it comes to sniffing out bombs and cancer and, and drugs or whatever. So I, I, I actually think this is a good investment. Yeah. I'll show you one of the most adorable videos I've seen is a a baby a little puppy herding sheep. Oh. I've seen uh and I, I've seen people who like will take apps like iPad apps um for for kids and have their like cats play them like uh like Fruit Ninja or like a, just a little bug squasher game and they just tap on it and it's it's not as scientific as this dog standing in the testing niche um but uh uh, yeah, like let's make apps for pets. They well, want and, to play. And, uh, uh, plus, on top of that, so given that that this is what pets 
or, or at least dogs. I'll, I'll only speak to dogs. Uh, what dogs seem to want is is structure and consistency. And as a result, uh, for example, uh, we've got a little baby gate that that keeps uh, our, our dogs. And Weimaraners are a very bright breed. And so um, uh, what she wants more than anything is to get into the carpeted, lush landscape that is the master bedroom. But she uh, uh, doesn't want to have to, you know, once she gets in there, she gets bored and starts chewing on things. So we have to put up the baby gate. And what we figured out is if she comes in bringing her dog bed, which is this thick sheepskin something or other, something robust that she can, uh, Weimaraners do something called nooking, where they, it, it's not quite chewing. It's just they, they put their mouth on something and they, they pulse. So what I'll say, so I'll say, go get your blanket, go get your blanket. And then she'll ignore me. And then I'll close the baby gate and go inside and she'll try to lean over and peek inside. And then finally I'll say like, oh, have you figured it out? The ticket for entry is go get your blanket. Then all of a sudden she gets real smart real fast, goes and gets her blanket and com comes back in. The only thing that's taxing for me is that I have to play enforcer on all of that. And that's, that's a, a, a robot turns out can be very, very consistent such that there's no negotiation because Joy will do this thing where she'll hesitate and I know what she's doing. She's like, yeah, there's a non-zero chance that you might let me go in without a ticket. And, uh, uh, but, but a robot doing that would be very effective. And I think, I, I, I think there's a lot of evidence to indicate that, that uh, the dogs would live longer doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, one more story. Uh, the choice between two, but I'll go for this. Well, well real quick, how's, how's your pup? Uh, you sent an adorable video of, of the pup in yes. your backyard. Well, nice thing is we thought about getting a dog and a dog showed up in our backyard and oh. uh, low maintenance, totally low maintenance. <laughs> don't right. have anything. Um, finds its you own know, food. I can hear him. Yeah, finds its own food. <laughs> Sometimes it might be a neighbor's cat or whatever. But for our listeners, uh, I was in sitting in my office right here in the middle of a meeting and I look and I have, I'm on the second floor here. And then there's, there's the walk space between our house and there's, there's wall and then there's hill and then kind of gradual hill. And so I can look onto the side of the step of the hill and I see a coyote just walking along in the middle of the day, just do, 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 do. I'm like, Oh, see him at night. <clears throat> now you see them at day. I guess that's a thing. I mean, I get all kinds of birds. Like right now I'm looking at like, I've got robins, whatever, but that was kind of like, huh. And then so I got a dog now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I sent that to my mom and I'm like, hey, we got a dog. I sent that thing. I said, we got a dog. She's like, oh, what kind? I'm like, oh, I don't know what it is. She goes, she goes, I think that's a she goes, I think that's a coyote. And I'm like, <laughs> like yes, what? I said, uh -huh. But take, I said, take a look at our cat. And I sent a photo of a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice about living near nature is you have all the pets in the world. You don't have to take care of them or let them in your house. They're just right up yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, this was, uh, I saw this on uh, Reddit. And, uh, there's a story behind this, but uh, sometimes a single photo without being gory is creepy by itself. There's something about it that it just, our brain starts to put two and two together and comes up with some horrific thing. So, Bryce, I'm going to share this with you if you want to share the first photo there, and we'll see the reaction from Justin and Brian. Sure. We're going to uh, reddit.com slash r slash interesting as f, and we're taking a look. Uh, oh, well, this is... Just show the photo. Just show I'm, the photo. I'm trying to work on it. The, the, the Reddit website is not a particularly well-made piece of hypertext. I know. Uh, <laughs> it, so, okay, this is from user... Uh, no, 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 no okay. names. All right. Just I'm, show them I'm, the I'm just trying to cover time so I can load up a picture for I you. I know. Here. I'll click talking. Uh, oh. oh. What is this? This <laughs> looks like, it looks like, at, at first blush, it looks like a barn that was built over an existing house. But then upon further examination, you can tell that that's insulation uh, on the quote unquote ground, which makes me wonder if. This is the top of another building that is poking up in the attic, like maybe a church steeple or something. I don't, I don't know, Justin. So it it looks like kind of a ramshackle house, uh, but what I but it looks like a a house front, but it is actually a uh a, 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 an attic. So it looks like a, a front of a house in in, in an attic. Cl but th this is Clip like some photos, Bryce. decaying country house. 
Okay, here's our next picture here. What? Oh my goodness! No, it is a little house. <laughs> well, uh, but but the house looks like the Paper Street house from Fight Club. Um, and yeah. it still has insulation for the floor, which means that they didn't put flooring, or that they only did. This is did the what? best video game horror level ever. Yeah, oh no, it, it definitely looks like. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I don't know why they spent money on sets on The Last of Us. It seems like they could have just shot yeah. most of it here. Wow, so how? it is an actual decaying, tiny little house, but there's no floor. It's only insulation. Uh, uh, the it, it very much looks like a Resident Evil uh, uh, situation where everything is intentionally tilted and creepy and decaying. But oh that, my god! <gasps> oh that, my gosh! I figured it out. That, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, but before you share, okay. uh, my guess is. There are crazy people who will spend crazy money to preserve things, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was an enclosure built around an existing building just to preserve it for some reason. Yeah, I the 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 insulation on the floor was really confusing me, but maybe they they were preserving this house and eventually put insulation on the floor. So that whatever is below this can still be insulated. Oh my God! Like the insulation was after all of this, could, could, and then it went mm, into disrepair. Could, could this be one of those like crazy legal things where it's like somebody wanted to develop like a Starbucks, but it was a historical building, oh. so they figured out that what they could do is technically preserve the top and then just gut everything below it and put a Starbucks in there. I that makes that makes makes sense. That makes sense to me. That makes yeah, dollars so and the, to the me. guy who pre it's catching windows is the original poster. He says it was a two story house bought by a church and then built around, then bought by his family, I guess him and his, his his spouse. And now we're here. And basically that was that was an old house that like originally had it was a couple had a store and the second floor was like their house. And then church bought it, built up around it, and then now they're stuck with this in the attic. Wow. That's bonkers. <laughs> and awesome i mean imagine being i'm gonna go up and put some ornaments in the attic honey click flashlight the first post if you click on a thing you can see the first post of just the flashlight illuminating it mm -hmm. i yeah. i Horrifying. would i would be in my car driving away going game over dude game over <laughs> also <Yeah. laughs> this is funny so so that part two with all the other photos uh so that was what two days ago three days ago this part one yeah. was uh, three years ago. <laughs> wow. There's a huge gap between these two posts, too. So so, so they lived in the house, Still there. afraid to go up there until yeah. last week. <laughs> and then finally, Amazing. they went in and explored it. <laughs> There's a house in my attic is the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the headline on yeah. Reddit. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, you know, the Michael Gondry story is he goes in there and finds an opening to the attic there and climbs up inside of there and then finds another yeah, house. Right. Ends up in Elon Musk's brain. And I, I believe oh, this is the exterior shots, yeah. here. Wow. There's not a lot of space for another house in I, there. I was about to say, that's not the size of building you would expect to uh, secretly hold another house in it that, that you're afraid of. Yeah. Wow. That's rad. I found a house in yeah. my house. Oh, sorry. I, I can't do anything yeah. this week. Yeah, I got to no. get rid of the house in my house. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was when I gave Brett the tour of my house, I saved the like the in law unit for last, and I show him. I walk in the living room. I walk up another flight of stairs. He's like, "Oh, there's a house in your house." And then there is like a space, a storage space. It's like a really big open storage space. It's like there's a house in the house in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I I love all of whenever people find weird stuff in homes and in like zillow listings and stuff there's something really pri primordial to it it's the same feeling as like when uh like when the la news goes live with a with a traffic uh with a car chase well and, and uh, there's something pure and honest about it in a way that that you don't sniff uh, you know i'm always looking to who where why why this is secretly a marketing campaign and it's like i when it comes to real estate 
that would be a very inefficient way to eventually sell Pepsi. And I think that's what I like about this very property. You know, we're sitting in the expansion that was a martial arts studio to a building from 1964 that didn't have a septic system and so on and so on and so on. Uh, there's an honesty to the story that's, that I really dig. Well, I'll give you one a little dishonesty here. Uh, in Massachusetts, some people were doing some routine inspection of a school crawl space. And guess what they found? Snakes and spiders. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Crossbreeding. Anybody? anybody? Um, nope. uh, no. Uh, roaches. Skeletons. Human skeletons. Silverfish. Oh, my God. Nope. I'm seeing a picture, and I have an idea. Oh. A crypto mining farm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They look like Some bombs, dude. too. Oh, my God. I, I was thinking yeah. it was all Some like child labor. <laughs> Yeah, some guy, well, some guy that worked for the school system or for the city went in and secretly put in a whole crypto mine to be able to seal the electricity from it. And somebody's doing an inspection wow. like, what the, what is this? And that is kind of brilliant because, uh, you know, it's probably a rounding error and nobody will track it down if you hide it well enough. And it's just literally a money factory. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying ethical. I'm not well. saying good. I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm only going like, ah, that wouldn't even be that much money. That would not even be. Well, oh, Brian, given, have you inspected every square inch of your property to make sure that none of your employees current or otherwise have put in? You know what? Uh, <laughs> I would do it right now, except for I want to announce <laughs> that there is a four-week amnesty period <laughs> for whatever I buy. <laughs> Uh, all right, you find those GPUs, they're yours, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Look, it, it, I'm going to turn around, and if it shows up on my desk, then there's no questions at. <laughs> Turns back, there's yeah. eight 4090s on his desk. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a single piece uh, of paper with a handwritten uh, key. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do picks. Yo, man, I got a pick. Pick it up. Uh, I've, only, I've only tried it out once or twice but i think it's a good show you should check out we're not wrong it's quite good it's a political roundtable discussion oh. hosted by one justin robert young uh i went and checked out their live event it, oh how was that can we get a live report from the live event uh it was really good um uh the thing i like most about this show mm. is when it's live i could just interrupt it whenever i want and that yeah. was fun uh, no, we had a great, uh, great show. Thank you to everybody who came out to uh, Piano Fight for that. That was uh, an absolute blast. Uh, the show went. It was great. Off of that hitch. Got to see so many awesome faces, and uh, we will definitely be doing more of them because that went well. So, uh, yeah, uh, about Ron DeSantis and Fox News versus Dominion is the episode that re was recorded live at Piano Fight Theater, one of the last few shows that they're going to do there. So we were honored to be a part of that as well. And uh, uh, yeah, go check it out. Nice. Uh, my pick is Kunk on Earth. Ooh, I, uh, I've, I've now it. gotten uh, <laughs> four uh, episodes into it. Uh, uh, it. It gets kind of better every episode. It is uh, and an extraordinarily well-structured and well-written uh, show. And uh, I... You know, if you're into that kind of humor, uh, it will it will definitely tickle your funny bone. Uh, somewhere between Alan Partridge, if you're familiar with British comedy, and a, a Dolly G show or something like that, but uh, very very well structured, a very strong character, uh, whom you only get more and more kind of uh, uh, in tune with her rhythms and the kind of like elements of her character. But um, yeah, just just really really fun stuff. Yeah. So that that's a show where I I would want to go and read the script, the screenplay of it because the just the writing on it is so is so stellar. There's there's just a lot of these very like so there's it's it, it's a history documentary but a funny thing right? Uh, it's like a comedy version, a parody of it. But there's there's certain little visual gags of like uh, uh, a a recreation of Jesus, uh, but he's. Uh, like you know uh, operating next to her as uh she's discussing how he was a carpenter and he keeps moving 
pieces of wood, but it's like over her head. And then one of them hits her in the head. It's just, it's, it's stuff that is just extraordinarily well done. Well, and, and you could tell that second by second, there was a brutal mandate that there must be an attempt to be funny every 27 seconds. So it's like, well, we have this establishing shot and she's going to walk over a hill while the voiceover happens. It's like, great. What, what's literally anything we could do is like, well, maybe she could just fall and kind of tumble down comically during this part. <laughs> and so they do. And uh, like, they're not all home runs, but I can't think of a show that swings for the fences more often than this one does. It just every 25 seconds, you get another at bat. I saw, uh, yeah. Charlie Great Brooker, stuff. Charlie Brooker created and written, and she's also been on a bunch of his shows too. Uh, people know her. Yep. I got to pick uh, if people we're talking about stuff. Uh, it's the Apple TV plus original series. Hello tomorrow. Oh, is it good? I say it's good. I think this is a pretty good little show. Okay. Uh, it's about a, a team of traveling salespeople who are selling timeshares on the moon. And there's a lot of questions of, uh, can Are you there, do that? Can you do that? Is there <laughs> something on? And there's a lot of questions of like, oh, uh, maybe people do go to the moon. It sounds like people go to the moon, but if this is all a scam, there's more people than this should be in on it. So there, there's a lot of interesting stuff. And then the uh, the lead character, his he ran out of uh, uh, of his family, his wife and son, uh, many many years ago. And so in in the show, uh, they go to the town where uh, where. Uh, his now adult son lives and he uh, talks him into joining the crew, but not that he's the father yet. And so there's some threes company type. Oh, stuff going there on we go. But it, it, it's really interesting. It's uh, it's only a half hour, which is really, I mean, if you do a half hour show, it's becoming easier and easier to, to win me over. Um, but, but also the cast is great. Um, it's uh, 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 Billy Crudup in the lead. Uh, Hank Azaria is one of the side uh, characters. Allison Pill is in it. Um, and they're, they're, it's a great cast, uh, really well written and of interesting world, like a retro futuristic world where you have old Studebaker cars, but they're all also hover cars and there's, uh, they're like holograms, but they're like staticky messed up. So, uh, very, very recommended. Hello tomorrow on Apple TV plus. So I have a friend who is pretty involved in the space industry, really a super neat guy. And he invited me over once to meet a friend, another somebody else he knew who was into like space tourism. And this person was a doctor whose plan was to build a retirement home on the moon because it would be easier as you get older to live on the moon. Yeah. What uh, would go wrong? That, okay. and, I mean, that kind of makes sense in in very loosey goosey theory, it's like, Oh, your bones get more brittle and it's hard to move around. Wouldn't it be nice to be one sixth gravity, less, less atmospheric I, resistance. He, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, but I'm like, I'm like, like the cost to lower the orbits. One thing, the cost to actually get stuff to the moon is like really, I mean, it was just one of these things where I'm listening to a guy and he's got his proposal and he's got all this. And I'm like, I'm a pretty forward thinking guy, but I'm like, dude, like there is a number of technology. It's like, I want to become a video game designer in 1920. <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine you went all that way to your vacation home and you forgot your wallet. <laughs> ah, True. shucks. I got to go back. True. So it, it was back. just sort of like, frustrating. I, I, I'm like, man, like that's a neat idea. That sounds like a great story. And uh, you know, like, like, you know, maybe 20 years from now, we'll have people working on the moon, maybe 30, 40, maybe people that, that maybe I it was just such a like, I don't know what time frame you're on here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have my pick. Pick it up. Justin, what's your favorite park to walk to? Uh, my favorite park to walk to. There's a park you walk to when you're in town now. Especially when you were living uh, in Oakland. Oh, Jack London Square. Did somebody say Jack London Square? Sorry, yeah, Jack London Square. That's what I meant. Um, I've been going through this kick of looking for like older, like Gilded Age, like science fiction and stuff to read, and I just finished a story yeah. by Jack London. And hey. I'm going to pitch this to you, okay? Uh, imagine a guy who's sent to San Quentin, okay, and at there because of certain events, uh, he gets sent to solitary confinement, 
and as he's laced up in a straight jacket, as they describe it, like it's more of you're just completely sealed inside of there, and they're they keep put doing this to him for reasons. But he realizes that by talking to some of the other people in solitaire by using a tapping code, including including a murderer who I looked up and was a real dude, and I looked up that guy's whole life story and it was fascinating. But one of these people says, "Yeah, like you know that." starts talking about astral projection. And this guy, when he gets laced up, chains himself to all of a sudden go into some other life. And he might be on a, a fishing ship. He might be somebody living in ancient Korea. He might be somebody in, you know, the frontier. And each time he goes into it, he has some sort of lifetime or experience. So the story is called the star Rover. And I actually really dug it. I really dug it. So the star Rover by Jack London uh, it's a novel. It's a full-length novel, and it's just just such a crazy 1915 story about astral projection and living in different lifetimes, etc. Wow, so. that, that sounds uh, fast. And being 1915, you know, almost uh, over a hundred years old, the uh, what must have been science fiction at the time. I'm sure there's some bits that are really rooted in. In mysticism, but also some bits that are rooted in like undiscovered science, probably, huh? Well, it's it's very it's very much a book of that period in time and what people believed, like you know, maybe about spiritualism and past lives and stuff. And it may have been even an opportunistic book because of that. But it did presage in the 1915. The big rise of spiritualism happened at the end of that decade because of uh, all the people the, died the, in World the, War One the, and the mothers trying to talk to yeah. their sons oh. and stuff. Mm. But uh, it's still, I as a as a, it's more of a fantasy sort of story, sci-fi. But I I, I found it very engaging because each time the guy would go in, he'd come out of it, and the warden would be yelling at him about something, and they'd, they'd be like, you know, put me in for twenty days, see if I care. Because the moment he went in, he's he living some entirely yeah. different lifetime. Wow. Yeah. So you can find this in there. You can get on Kindle. Like there's a couple. Like there's like collected works of like Jack London. 99 cents that will have this and a bunch of other stories but it just got me into this jack london because like i don't like having to read call of the wild when i was a kid like i don't recall any jack london reading so i just enjoyed it well it's it's kind of fascinating because using a different theatrical conceit and and let's say 1915 uh, uh parapsychology you know made it seem like astral projection was just around the corner similar to how in the 1980s uh, you know, cyberspace felt just around the corner. And as a result, I, I think it was like the second William Gibson book I started reading, there was a character who gets severely injured and spends most of his time recovering, not aware that he's a patient in recovery, but instead living in the south of France during World War I, hearing about the difficulties on the front lines or something like that, uh, which structurally is identical but the uh, thematic conceits are slightly different. Hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah, it, it is it is it, it makes you think about that idea when you could live in parallel worlds and stuff and things like that, but but it's I love reading kind of science fiction and fantasy from that era because it's just it's kind of untainted by the path that we took and it is this alternate sort of thing where the world is. So anyhow, The Star Rover by Jack London, my pick. Uh hey, uh has anybody I don't know if you guys are subscribed to the Wall Street Journal, but I, I, I missed it today. But I was I was wondering, like, uh, if they published any uh, uh, top top ebooks that are out there. Does anybody yeah. happen to know? I mean, do they anybody normally keep track list? of this? Thing? They, well, they do, and yeah. that's what makes that list valuable to me, is because I value ebook sales. Is ebook sales now? Yeah. Would those be fictional ebooks? Well, I I prefer yeah, oh, well, specifically I'm not kind anyway. of kind of you know. Uh, I, I took a screenshot yesterday of something. Let me pull this up. Um, oh yeah. Wall Street Journal Wall Street. yesterday, and they know business. and they know a lot about books. The Wall Street Journal. Well, yeah, they do. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, really. Best, best. Where do you think the ticker tape comes selling, from? Books. That's from the books. Yeah. Best, <gasps> selling, best selling fiction ebooks. Let me see. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thing, <laughs> so line, burner, in the category of clue, fiction, that's amazing. Sea Castle. That sounds familiar. Sea <laughs> Castle. Well, yeah. I Sea Castle and I eat it. But Andrew <laughs> Ma May. What? <laughs> Gotta be a typo. Well, uh, now, dude, Andrew. that's fantastic, man! Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yeah, your new book, Sea Castle, uh, number one bestseller on Amazon, uh, on on the Wall Street Journal top books list. How's it feel? Feels good. It feels 
good. Uh, I said something when I sent the sent this to everybody. Brian laughed at. I said, "Yeah." I'm like, "Yeah, it's a great Wall Street Journal bestsellers for the fifth time." <laughs> yeah. So when I, when I shared, that. so when I shared it at work, I left out that this was my fifth time because I want everybody to enjoy the experience of what it's like for the first time. The Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, they're like, "Oh, good for you." You're like, "Yeah," and I've only done it four times before this. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So huh. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Check it out. See, congratulations. It's been weird. Okay. Pew. 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 All right. Hey, that's a, that's a weird thing. Uh, you guys want to, uh, do we have time for some after things? Uh, I, I, I uh, have other responsibilities, but I can wait, uh, up to 30 minutes to do them. Okay. Justin, or do you do you need a bolt? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of hungry. I might bounce pretty quick. So if we, if we can do a quick one, okay. We can do it. Otherwise, uh, oh, you know, I'll uh, I I got uh I got something we can do pretty quick. Okay. Uh, well, okay. in the meantime, let's take a break. Okay. And uh, we'll come back in just a moment with a very nice after things. How you doing, Bryce? Doing good. I'm doing good. I uh uh. This weekend is the first weekend for Formula One. Uh, they're back. Oh. And, uh... They back. They back. Have you watched any of the golf show? The golf show that they did to to, to have an F1 show, but for golf? I watched, uh, maybe half of the first episode. I didn't... I, I didn't like it. I didn't like the tennis one that they Turns did. Turns out golfers are boring. Yeah. And, and, and with... Like the PGA is in such like a big conflict period with this live the live golf thing, like that's yeah. such a huge conflict. You should be able to hoist a whole show on top of it, but then they have to do the drive to survive thing of like, oh, we have to explain the game, we have to explain the people, we have to explain the teams and how everyone's problems and stuff, and and you avoid the big story um, just yeah. long enough that you're like, eh, I'm fine. I would think. Trying to choose, like, you know, what golf club to use should be just as riveting as watching a pit crew. <laughs> right? Yeah. It seems the same. It I seems mean, same to me. crashing into a gigantic fireball, water, water shot. The rough. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah, um, it's it's crazy because I think that was like like F one just hit such a rich vein in being to explain to an audience that would have otherwise never really given a rat's toot about uh about the sport by way of that show that they're like well we don't understand this so let's just do it with every other sport that has a footprint but isn't gigantic in america right right and so that's 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 tough um i'll give i'll probably give them another try but yeah i don't they didn't really hook me um, yeah um Oh, you know, I'm playing a I'm playing a new game called The Quarry. Mm. Have you heard of this? The Quarry. Um, you heard of this? You seen this? This is uh, this is from the people who made Until Dawn. Uh, they're both uh, horror games, and so this mm -hmm. is like uh, uh, teenage camp counselors uh, at the end of summer camp are staying one extra night at the summer camp, but uh, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing that. That's dangerous things happen. Um, mm. But what is really fascinating about it is, um, it's it's similar to like the Telltale games, where it's very it's it's narrative based. You're making decisions, story driven, exactly. And they have something really. They have a bunch of like co op modes and multiplayer things, but they also have movie mode. And oh, so you just watch it play? Yeah, you and you pick like when you when you turn on movie mode, you can either say. Show me the mode where everyone lives. Show me the mode where everyone dies. Or, oh wow, let me pick the personalities of the characters, and those personalities decide the different choices that they make, and you kind of just go mm. with that. And so it's interesting. That's really fascinating. Yeah. Because yeah. um, uh, they've got like they've got some uh, recognizable faces. The last game that they did had a uh, Rami Malek in it before Mr. Robot blew up. Blew up. Um. <laughs> so now I just now I now I'm playing my favorite video game, sitting sitting back and watching it play itself. <laughs> yeah, what a world! A world. Uh, anybody else need a break? Now nah, let's roll. Justin. Okay. 
Uh, all right. Well, then, Andrew, I think we're ready for the After Things podcast. I'll count you in uh, once you finish taking a bite, because I know you're chewing and you're doing your whole thing. <laughs> no, you can. I was going to cover. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was gum. It wasn't going to end. Oh, okay. good. Yeah, good looking out, then. That's my secret, Cap. <laughs> I'm always chewing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm always. All right. Here we go. I'll count you in for After Things. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. And Brian Brushwood. Howdy. So, Bryce, what do you got for us? I got a thing. I'm testing out a new thing. I've talked about marbles a lot on this program before. And I think I have a new project that I'm kicking around and trying to, to figure out. Um, uh, it's it's called Blind Corners, and uh, it is a – I don't know how to describe it, but it's a little betting thing. It's a club. It's a league. I, is it a podcast? I don't know. Are are, are you holding back – like, is, is there a secret part that you're protecting? But... No, I'm just trying to start Got it. learning how but to talk about I'm, it. <laughs> and I'm looking at a second betting game wondering, is Castillo Sicilian? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I've been doing marbles, and I really like marbles. A lot of the fun things I like about marbles is that anyone can show up, anybody can walk right up, and you don't need to have this whole rigmarole of make an account, sign in, do all this stuff. Um, and so uh, uh, I I did a, a beta of this last uh, last week, and I'm doing another one now. Um, where uh, on on uh, on a on a corner of the marbles website marbles.win slash bet we've got I, i've i've got just a little form here and some uh, bets on the upcoming f1 race on uh, sunday and um i'm i i don't know what this is i did this because i knew i wanted to do this i knew like it's fun like we have fun doing bets and stuff i like marbles because that's that tends to be very non-committal for folks um and so I'm going like through the process of like figuring out the technical side of it, but I don't even know how to talk about this because I don't know what it is yet. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. If, if there are players playing and each week on week, the does the thing that they did the week before affect them in any kind of ongoing situation? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you, you get coins every time you enter. You have to set a minimum bet. And uh, if you you keep the points that you that you earn. So you're always getting so, coins um in a anti so what, 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 way. What you have invented uh, or or made a new version of is is what's called a pick'em league, right? And and this is very popular with football uh because that's a popular game and everybody's familiar with it, so you can have easy buy-in mm -hmm. to say like, okay, well, you have to pick five games and then the uh, uh at, at the end of the uh season we find out who picked the most games or there's different versions of it like survivor where uh you just always have to pick a team you have to pick make one pick each and every week but that team has to win and if you're out then you're out for the entire year um so yeah i, I think but but you are you are demonstrating that there is uh, uh certainly a desire to do this with things other than than football and uh, uh i think it's really rad Thanks. You know, a little interesting detail, uh, mobster and gambler Bugs Bugsy Siegel um, apparently had a house in Speakeasy in Gambling Joint in L.A. in a place called Castillo del Lago. Well, <laughs> well I think that probably just means Cape Lake Castle, but okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Brycey Castle. Well, and... Yeah. Uh, but I... I I I'm in this weird place of like I like doing it. I think it's a good idea. I've got a cool. I mean, I even I even like printed out like physical betting slips to bring to Great Night. Oh, Brian. Also, you didn't fill one out, so you can fill one out if you'd like. Okay. Um, but like, better I'm, fill it out, Brian. You don't. Want well, he played last week, and I wanted to. Yeah. Anyway, like we get it. We get it, Bryce. We're I do it. I have like enthusiasm for it, but I don't. I I I very specifically don't know what this is. Like I started this because I I liked this part of it. I liked the bit where people can play and do a bet. Um, yeah. And I'm I guess I'm just leaving myself open to like well maybe it's like a weekly a short weekly podcast or an email letter or 
uh, I don't know what it is, but um, the, well, the, uh, the fun uh, of a pick'em league is having as many people as possible playing, right? At least as many people as possible that you care about beating. Um, you know, to go back to a, a, a book that Brian and I have been fascinated about over the last two weeks, the Status Game. Uh, I'm on my third lap, the by the way. That that book makes the argument that we are constantly looking for and trying to find games in which we can measure ourselves, uh, you know, it, it, amidst everybody. And it is ongoing and we play multiple games, but we are constantly evaluating who's above us, who's below us. And that makes us feel good or bad. But the struggle is the point. It, you are literally creating a game that is mirroring that game when you were doing something like what you were doing. You are saying, okay, my skill or luck in this situation has allowed me to say, uh, uh, these people are above me, these people are below me, but there is a sweet spot. You want enough people that you feel really, really good if you are higher than the average, and you don't want so many people that it's such a soup that it doesn't really matter. And the only people who feel really good are the ones who are up on top. Uh, uh, so I think what, what you should be doing is just focusing on community. The, okay. the community is what matters and something like that. Uh, 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 let me make a pitch for you um, uh, because at its heart, Marbles is, of course, a, a wonderful, delightful, random nonsense engine, so on, so on. But but that's uh, a good brand, pretends to be one thing, is actually something else. So what if, just throwing it out there, what if this league, whatever it is, is you say there's only one metric by which everyone should be judged, and it is this league, and this is a religious proclamation to everybody who is playing along. The currencies that you have, this week we're playing for IQ points. Your IQ, uh, and, you, and you gamble on IQ. This week we're playing for how tall you are, and somebody could say, I'm 12 foot 11 in the only, le the, the only place that matters, this place. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, figure out all of the status things that you have, or it's like a, 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 how many pinstripes on your Lamborghini, like get increasingly specific about it and make all of those currencies and make it a, a, a surprise to find out what week over week over game over game you're playing for. And so everybody ends up having bragging rights. And then um, uh, the the core thesis, uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure I've, I've got this right on my third lap, is there are two things people play for. They play for status in their game, and then after that, they play for the status of their game. And so uh, everybody who has a lot of IQ points will begin to tribalize and make a fun game of saying, what does it matter uh, how many pinstripes are on your Lamborghini? What matters is how many IQ points you have. And the meme will well, say, uh, the people who are very tall in the game will say, sorry, I can't hear you down there. Like, like you, you create these fake tribalistic instincts with currencies related to each of these status symbols and you, and, but, but under one proclamation, which is, uh, I don't know about the other world that you live in. The only real world that matters is this one. And then, uh, in, and build from there. I think I, I would get very much into this game and I would get into the trash talking and elevating my status game against other people's status game and so on. Hmm. Interesting. I, he, 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 one of the the tough things that I've been trying to work through is like I I feel like technically this is not a difficult idea, but I think the way I'm doing it is pretty. Uh, uh, it's, it's like I'm using safety scissors a little bit. I'm still using Airtable. I like Airtable, but there's a lot of things that you that are really difficult to do. So uh, so, so what what you want to do is create something that scales, and that's challenging for you. I want it to be easy. I want it to just be something – I really want it to be easy. That's the thing I like so much about marbles is you can just show up one day. You don't have to know how well you did before or what your thing is. You just show up and play. And right now I'm in this little two-step where, okay, you go to the website, but then you go to this other link to see how, how what your balance is because other otherwise it's like a, like 200 bucks a month for me to have the tech thing to just show you what that All number right, is. Okay. So. But uh, you know what? I... Of these three sharks, I'm, I'm buying in. <laughs> All we have to do is model baseball and 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 create a bunch of things that people get to brag about. It, I mean, it is kind of a baseball am, thing. Yeah. I am gonna make. I'm gonna sound like a corporate shill, and it's fine. I accept that. <laughs> um, I use 
I have offloaded a lot of my problem solving. I'm trying to figure things out, particularly code or whatever like that, or like how to merge solutions to just chat GPT. I'm like, I got this, I got this. How should I do this? You know, or cause it, it's mm-hmm. got a lot of collected wisdom in there and some of the stuff. So yeah, I'd be very curious to see how, if you framed it, whatever, what answers it gave you. Yeah, because I, I know the codex, uh, especially the codex stuff in like uh, VS Code can do a similar thing for code, right? You can say, hey, I need mm-hmm. to access the Twitch API or whatever. And it does a pretty good job of, of pulling that. And, uh, and, it, and I've had stuff where it might say like, oh, create a Zapier account that hits Airtable every X things to go get this. And then this, so like try, even just trying like chat GPT to sort of say like, like sometimes... It's, I've been surprised like, oh yeah, I could just like set up this little microservice here that grabs the data from here and puts it here and then it's available, whatever. But um, yeah, again, corporate chill <laughs> disclosure. Um, I work for OpenAI, yeah. but I, the amount yeah. of work that I do now for my work that uses the tools they build at work. I'm sure Pretty good. But, but, Within the framework, uh, okay. and, and uh, at this point, I'm no longer talking to my friend, Andrew Main. I'm only talking to... Uh, We're no longer friends. You heard it here first, folks. I'm only speaking to corporate mouthpiece of AI, uh, OpenAI. How confident, because I, I personally, there's a lot of things I'd like to ask uh, OpenAI chat GPT, but I'm afraid to for fear that it goes on my permanent record. I, the same reason I'm afraid of things on Google or whatever. Um, speaking only as a corporate mouthpiece for open AI, uh, how, how, how should I feel about that? Um, so I can read you the statement again. I am, well, you have to just, I'll give you the email address where you can ask your direct your comms. <laughs> okay, right. and, and maybe this isn't but, the right platform for it, but I, I want to be careful that we're, we're doing the right thing here. Okay. So just so you know, we have. Data, like for our, our, I can tell you how our, our API, I don't, I don't specifically have an answer in chat GPT, but for our API, we have a retention policy of like 30 days and that's just to make sure there's like no bad actors doing stuff with it and then we delete it. We're not really at the point where for that data. Uh, chat GPT still uses these interactions to sort of get data on like, did this thing work or that work or whatever? I'd have to get, I can't give you a specific answer on like what the policy is on that. Okay, because we're still trying to figure out: is it good? Give us feedback, and I don't want to make a well, statement. Well, what, what I'm seeking as as a tremendous fan and booster is just 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 confirmation that that <laughs> I'm not going to find myself 75 questions in and and then uh, feel like somebody's got my number or something. I, I will I will I will say as somebody who has covered tech for a while that a lot of the reason why you would want long term retention is for advertising targeting. Um, you know, that, that has been the reason why you would keep as long of a footprint as companies like Google and Facebook would want to do is because they want to make sure that they are, uh, uh, creating as much of a profile on you as possible, age, demographics, friends, locations, uh, so they can feed you the best possible ads and those ads can get traction. And therefore that brings in more advertisers and that keeps their, their, their ferry rolling, uh, who knows what the future of uh, chat gpt is or or will be uh but that 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 i i i i would as i understand it that that kind of long tail long memory uh stuff is is to create your social graph uh, for us it's not so much our our reason that we have that is is for making sure looking for misuse because if, if somebody's like using their chat account to one training, we do want to train. It's like, oh yeah, it got this task right. It need this. It, it knows how to do this. It does not how to do this. That's part one. Part two is somebody who's spamming or writing stuff, whatever. We need to be able to go back and see like, oh yes, this came from this account. So I would say that uh, that's that's on our disclosure right now for this instance. When we with our API, but what that means now is you could build your own version of chat GPT with our API, meaning you could just say, I'm going to create my own front end or whatever, do that. We have a 30 day policy of holding on to the data. And that's literally for those, but we don't train on it. Good. <laughs> that, that increases me wanting to <laughs> play with it, <laughs> but, uh, cool. uh and back, back, back to your point. Say, oh, that thing, like, it was a research project up in, in you know, starting in late November. Chat GPT started late November. Wow. And it was a research project. Uh, yeah. 
Bryce, uh, to to your point, um, I I would I would say. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, I mm-hmm. think I think uh, number one, I would say read the status game. Uh, I, I think it'll it'll provide insights as to what's fun about what you're proposing and what already exists in other things. Only, uh, I, I I I love everything that you're putting together on this. I th- I think it sounds really really good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I I I uh, I, I'm I, I'm in an interesting place, and I I. I'm excited because I'm I'm experimenting with it and figuring things out, um, and yeah, I, I just don't really know what it'll look like. I mean, uh, uh, to 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 what Justin said uh, at the beginning of the show, like you know, community and getting the people around it is is mm-hmm. is obviously a big part of it. Um, but I'm also just having fun trying to figure out the technical side and if I can if I can solve it uh, in this the, the cheapest way possible. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's one. It's one of those things where, like, the thing I can, the thing that would just solve everything is like this thing, and it's expensive as hell because it's for not made from this. Um, but, uh, but it's, but I don't know. It's, it's fun to have. It's certainly just fun to have a new project that is like this could be anything. I don't know. What, yeah. What, what could this be? Who knows? So, um, I don't know. Just a little, uh, a little something there about something I'm cooking up. Yeah. Cool. I'm, well, I. Oh, yeah. oh, I, I, I would say you legitimately have an opportunity. Uh, uh, let's use Blazeball as a as as a uh, comparison. Okay. Uh, do people gamble on Blazeball? Is there a, a mm-hmm. sanctioned gambling league on, uh, ba- on Blazeball? The way you play Blazeball is, bet is on, by betting. You bet okay. on the games. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, and Blazeball similarly. I mean, you do have to log in, but they give you coins. If you lose, you don't. You're not out. Out. You, know, you get to yeah. just keep playing again. You'll get coins another day. Right. So, so in that case, what I would do, or what I would suggest, and what I'm willing to sit down and spend a couple hours talking about is figure out what has worked for Blazeball and figure out how to be Pepsi to their Coke, right? If what they are is safe, then consider being or appearing to be unsafe. If what they are is um, uh, mm-hmm. relatable, consider and uh, not necessarily embrace, but consider ways to be unrelatable. That's how you go from apples to apples, baseball, to cards against humanity, uh, uh, whatever this thing is, right? Mm. So, so if if they're safe, then consider being dangerous, et cetera. It's well, yeah, I'm, yeah. Be, be Penn and Teller to their David Copperfield, basically. Sure. Yeah, and, and yeah, um, yeah. That that's all in in consideration. I guess I'm I'm in I'm I'm very much in like the technical space. So conceptually, I feel like I I I, I want to get this concept started first before we keep building before we build up the next thing on it just yet. Because um, they're yeah. just just little basic things like figuring out how to handle people's balances and stuff. Like that's that that's more important <laughs> than than um, uh, than building a website for it first. Well, so, uh, stuff like that. The neat thing is by virtue of being the storyteller, you get to alter the story whenever you need to. Let's say, for example, uh, there's, I don't know, a, a lightning bolt hits and suddenly everybody's scores happen or, or are lost. Then uh, as the voice of God, the the teller of the story, you get to factor that into the narrative. You get to say, today is... Uh, Jubilee month, all debts are released and everybody just report to me how much money you have. And then, but if you lie, imaginary punishments may happen. I mean, there's a bunch of, I mean, you get to, you can always shoot first and then write the story around it. Uh, As I think, you know, as the person who writes the story around a lot of the content that we put out. (laughs) Yeah. That's great. That's great advice. (laughs) Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm excited. If you, if you, if anyone listening wants to play along, uh, you can go to marbles.win slash bet uh, to enter. There's instructions and information there. Um, uh, and check I, out. We had about 50 people do do it last week, and now the season's actually getting getting going. So hopefully, we get more more folks joining us. Brian, as you made your crazy edict, it just I had the, a flash of inspiration for a TV show, like a Netflix show. Okay. It's called pre- It's called President for a Day. We build a replica of the Oval Office. We build a replica of like uh, one of the conference rooms and the media briefing room. 
and we select average people to be president for a day and then they get, get to like you know have like a little west wing stuff this and they is get a to great make decisions idea. they do it's it's big world and, and small we, world and and it's relatable like like well I'm a working class mom in in this area and it's like I never And thought. then you get feedback on what happens. Yeah, like a computer predicts like the outcomes of something like Oh my god. Oh, this yeah. is a great idea and for then, a show. And then and then have presidential historians judge your performance for oh, yes. Yes. or or, yes. or, or yeah. charitably explain, you know, this is an awful lot like when Garfield had to deal with whatever. Yeah, you know, the that lasagna commentary. Problem. Yeah, news yeah. commentary, like come in, Fox and CNN, like your version of those things, come in and talk yes. about like your policies and stuff. I... Oh man. No, Bryce, imagine what what was what was the Japanese uh reality show that got really hot on Netflix? Oh, Terrace, Terrace House. House, right? Yeah. Yeah, imagine that, but it's like like the Greek chorus instead of a bunch of Japanese celebrities are just like presidential historians. They're just like cuts to them watching the thing on television and being like, this "Well, that's the end." The end. During, during each each time you make a decision, the talking heads you get real talking heads to debate if it's dumb or good or whatever. Then at the end of it, the historians discuss your legacy. Well, and plus also, okay, okay, things you get. Um, uh, you you get to be in a replica of the Oval Office. You get presented a problem, and then you have to deal with the fallout. You have to give a speech about it and explain why and what you did or whatever. Uh, computers generate a bunch of numbers, but now also, also uh, somebody's going to be game at CNN, MSNBC, and Fox to actually just engage in this false reality to report on the story yeah. along with uh, there'll be there'll be kind of a little uh, fake twitter uh, there'll be a special app just for the fake reality of this person uh and then oh my god this is a great idea i'm so sad we're saying it maybe i'm happy we're saying it live on the internet right now because now everybody knows that andrew made it up <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I don't, not, not like any of us has the time to try to pursue this. So maybe if it inspires, want to watch it. What? I might, I might it's... have texted a friend of the show. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that's what, that's what you were doing. I knew it. I, I don't, I don't know. I, it's like, it's an, it would make an interesting YouTube video. But is it a game? Is it a not a yes. game? It's not a, it a real game. world. Each week, it's one person. Hi, I'm this person from America. Yes, my values are blank, and then they go through the gauntlet and. Then you're on to the next. Think person. of like Secret Millionaire or the Boss, <laughs> Undercover Boss, all of that. Like Undercover Boss, all that. It's like, oh, like you meet a person, you're gonna see how they do it because you kind of go like, well, will this decision be well liked? Because I like this decision, or did will this bad? Or no, I don't like what they did, and how's that gonna react, or what's it gonna go on? Hmm. Rice is already shooting it down. Also, like non-zero chance that this reality show, game show, whatever it is actually launches political careers <laughs> if somebody does really well and oh, handles God, everything really yeah. well oh geez that, that's yeah uh, i can think of worse ways that political careers have been launched <laughs> <laughs> all right we we, we got to cut this off right. <laughs> before before we have to sign ndas uh cool well th thanks for at least hearing me out guys i don't i don't know i'm i'm in a very loosey-goosey place with this and uh i'm glad i could talk it out let that goose loose man let it fly free has it been? Gentlemen, it's been after. Hey. All right. I, I got to call a whole bunch of lawyers. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so sorry that this episode has been scrubbed from the Internet. And nobody knows who invented this idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said something where it came from. So it was listening to you and going like, man, what if we what if we gave Brian all this power for a day? <laughs> No, that's that's pretty good. In a good. safe setting. Yeah. It's good shit. All right, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll Bye, guys. Back. We'll be back with Marbles in a few hours here in the evening. Check it out. We'll be back on Monday with Cord Killers. All stuff on the weekend as well. Have a good rest of it. Bye. <laughs> Any heels I got on service. Too high up. I don't think I heard you.